She had a name for him already? Nico. Yes. You checked upstairs, he's not there. And it was, it was odd. There was a sheet missing from the bed in the master bedroom. You know, it's a pregnant woman and her two small children. They have two little girls that are um, three and four. I was screaming at him. I was frantic. Whose phone is that? I believe that is his. Oh, so this was going to be the worst one, smell-wise. The story of Chris Watts and his family is a haunting one. In 2018, in the quiet town of Frederick, Colorado, Chris and his wife, Shanann, seemed to have an idyllic life with their two daughters, Bella and Celeste, and another child on the way. But behind closed doors, darkness loomed. One day, everything changed in the most unimaginable way. Shanann and the girls vanished sparking a desperate search and a wave of panic. As the investigation unfolded, a chilling truth came to light. Chris Watts, the devoted husband and father, was hiding a sinister secret. Man, if, if you're hearing this or you're out there, please, please let somebody know you're okay. I got the phone call that said, uh, my neighbors are missing. Um, and everybody was kind of just in shock. It was not too long. Chris Watts was convicted of murdering his pregnant wife, Shanann Watts, and their two young daughters, Bella and Celeste. They settled in Frederick, Colorado. Shanann worked as an independent sales representative for a multi-level marketing company, promoting health and wellness products. Amazing. We're not promised anything, but to be able to enjoy our children, I'm not gonna lie, my kids are, are crazy, <laughs> but I love them. And I love the fact that I can be there for them. Bella knows that mommy doesn't go into work. So when mommy leaves the house without them, it's boring to her. You know, we go, we go everywhere together and we do everything together. And that's what she's used to. And just creating that, like that legacy, like the things that you, you want to be the example. You don't want to tell your kids what to do. You want to show them. And I feel like I'm able to show them how to be strong, how to work hard, how to be confident. I, I mean, I'm by far a confident person, but I'm more confident than I've ever been in my life. And I want to be able to show that to my girls. Like, Bella walks around very shy. She's like, she has a mixture of myself and Chris and her. Like, she's an introvert, but she's also branching out of her shell a lot sooner than I ever did in my life. Chris worked as an operator for Anadarko Petroleum. Chris got a new job. They decided they were going to follow their American dream and start new in Colorado. It's a kind of small town. I think people probably felt great about living there. Felt like this was a safe, beautiful place to raise a family. From the outside, Chris and Shanann appeared to have a happy marriage. They were lovely children. Um, they're like, hi, lady, hi, lady. You know, we would have just a, a verbal interaction because our porches are so close. They would have their little wagon out in the front and Chris would be pulling them around in the wagon. They were outside doing the family thing. Shanann was very active on social media, often posting pictures and videos of her family. She really saw a connection with uh, what she could do online, making sales and revenue, but also more importantly, like to really truly just help other people achieve a better life for themselves and a better identity. Hey everybody, so Chris and I are sitting here. Going out? Waiting to um, board our flight to Miami and then we're gonna fly all the way back home to see our girls um, in Denver. So we're super excited. It's been a wonderful, wonderful, amazing experience this week. Um, Lavelle definitely outdid themselves. Um, literally, this place has been paradise. Her posts portrayed a loving family life filled with joy and affection. However, there were significant issues beneath the surface including financial strain. The couple filed for bankruptcy in 2015, struggling with mounting debt and expenses. In the early morning of August 13th, 2018, Shanann returned home from a business trip in Arizona. I just told her, if you need help in the morning, let me know. And we gave each other a hug and I watched her go into the house. At that time, she was 15 weeks pregnant with their third child. Bilbo Beach has been used to discard human remains for some time. We could have a serial killer. 
means for some time. We could. According to Chris, they argued after she returned. Chris claimed he told Shanann he wanted a separation, which led to a confrontation. However, on August 13th, 2018, later in the day, Chris reported Shanann and the girls missing. He called Shanann's friend, Nicole Atkinson, who had dropped her off earlier and expressed concern that Shanann was not responding to messages and had missed a doctor's appointment. She was supposed to go to a doctor's appointment and she hadn't updated her friend about this doctor's appointment. She's trying to get a hold of her, but her phone is off. The girls were gonna have their first day of school. You would expect to hear an update on social media. Like, oh my gosh, they were so cute, here's a picture. This was a day that you would expect all sorts of updates online from somebody who who already regularly updates everyone, and there was nothing. A lot of people were very concerned. You know, where are they? You know, it's a pregnant woman and her two small children. Atkinson called the police, and a welfare check was conducted at the Watts home. Hi, Cece. My name's Nicole, and I'm calling because I'm concerned about um, a friend of mine. Um, I dropped her off at her house at 2 in the morning last night because we were out of town together and we were on the way back from the airport and um, she was having issues and she's pregnant and I haven't been able to get a hold of her this morning and I've gone to her house and her car is there and stuff like that but she won't answer the door, she won't answer phone calls, she won't answer text messages and I'm just really, really concerned and she had a doctor's appointment this morning and she didn't go to it and I'm just, I don't know what to do. I've called him and talked to him and he said that she went on a play date with her other two daughters, but like if she went on a play date, they're both in car seats, why would she not take a car? <laughs> Perfectly understandable. Do you happen to know her address, Nicole? I'm asking to stand outside the house. It's 2825 Saratoga Trail in Frederick. And then I said, like, Chris, can you just come home and check to make sure she's okay? Because the shoes she wears every single day are right inside her door. So um, we were in, out of town for work, and we flew in last night. Our flight got delayed, and I dropped her off at her house at 2 in the morning. And I have called and texted. I've come to her house. She's not answering the door. She's not responding to text messages, phone calls. I've had other friends reach out to her. None of us can get her to respond to us. Um, they have two little girls that are... Um, three and four. I mean, there's no movement in the house whatsoever. And he states that she didn't take them to daycare and was gonna go on a play date, but they're both in car seats and their car, her car is here. He called me and I was screaming at him. I was frantic. You need to get to the house. Nikki's calling the police so they can break down the door. He said, no, don't call the police. I don't wanna get them involved. He said, you're, you're an idiot and you need to get to the house because something's wrong. The police rushed to the house and started searching their house and saw that the house was totally a mess. Moreover, all of Shanann's belongings were inside the home. Whose phone is that? I believe that is his. Uh, Bomb overtook hers. We all ran through the house kind of looking for her. You checked upstairs, she's not there. And it was it was odd, the things that you did see. It didn't make sense to me. Chris initially told investigators a false story. He said that during the argument, Shanann became enraged and strangled their daughters, Bella and Celeste. In a fit of rage, Chris claimed he then strangled Shanann. They went to a birthday party yesterday over at a friend's house down the street. And then, is someone sleeping in the basement? I did it three times. The separation thing, I just, that's right. How, how recently? Probably about two nights ago, three nights ago, well, when she was here. So, probably last night, <coughs> Thursday. Thursday night, Friday. Okay. And then your kids, do they sleep in their own bed? Yeah, or do they, they sleep, sleep with you those, guys? Those two adjacent rooms, they connect to that bathroom. You're lucky. And you've talked to all the friends you guys have around the area? <coughs> And what was the conversation this morning you guys had? It was about uh, selling the house and the separation. And how'd she take that? We were both pretty emotional. I was both crying. 
And then did you see her before you went to work? Did mm -hmm. you say anything to her? Well, she went back, like, well, she told me she was going to go to her friend's house and be with the kids, take the kids with her. Oh, she told you she was taking the kids to yeah. her friend's house? Yeah. She didn't say who, though? Oh, no, no. No, but she was still in bed when that happened. And their beds would have definitely been made. Yes. And her sheets wouldn't have been stripped off the bed. No. There was a sheet missing from the bed in the master bedroom. Chris comes over to your home, along with the police, to watch that surveillance footage. Yes, he was standing right in my living room, basically watching it. Some of the tools that I have from the toolbox. And he looked very frantic. Clark, I'll be on the side. I just want to get everything done. She didn't text me, which is really odd because she texts me every morning. Chris appeared on local news stations pleading for the safe return of his family. I'm just hoping right now that she's somewhere safe and maybe she's just, she's there. But right now it's just like, if she's vanished, like I want her back so bad. I want those kids back so bad. Her friend thought to pay a visit. What happened when you got to the house? I couldn't get in. It was locked from the inside. And then I called Chris and asked if he knew where Shanann was. And he said she went on a play date. And I said, Chris, her car's in the garage. How could she have gone on a play date when both Bell and he's here in car seats? However, inconsistencies in his story quickly raised suspicions. So they brought him to the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. If he is hoping and believing that they're still alive, so why would you start talking about them in past tense? I definitely needed to know what was the reason for the separation? What was the reason behind wanting to possibly end his marriage? If you weren't having an affair, Chris, um, what is it? Why are you falling out of love? Now, the last, past, the last five weeks, like being by myself and being able to be myself again. I couldn't be myself around Jeanette anymore. Why not? It was like I was walking just like, if, like you know, like walk on eggshells type thing. It's kind of like you don't, you feel like you're always doing something that's wrong. It's like you, you feel like you're never like, doesn't make, does that make sense at all? The timing doesn't make sense to me. While questioning him, the detective checked his phone and found some bold photos with his coworker. In the months leading up to the tragedy, Chris and Shanann's relationship was severely strained. Chris began an extramarital affair with Nicole Kessinger, a co-worker. Police found romantic tour pictures and some nude pictures of her on his phone. That he very clearly and for quite a period of time had been having an affair with a co-worker at the oil company that he worked at. He had been lying to Graham Coder the day before. If you're going to be deceitful with law enforcement about that, what else have you been deceitful about? It changes for us the possible motive. If Chris did do something to his wife and children, this could be the catalyst for that. Or if she left, did she really know about this other person? It kind of brings a whole different dynamic into the investigation. The affair started around June 2018 and Chris reportedly told Kessinger that he was in the process of separating from his wife. I definitely wanted to see if Chris was going to keep lying about the infidelity, so I brought up if he was having an affair. Did she accuse you of anything? I mean, she, being a woman, I mean, she's like, is there somebody else? I'm like, no, there's nobody else. I mean, this is, this is me talking to you about this. This isn't like somebody came into my life and took me from you. This is, you know, me talking to you. This is just me. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no outside influence coming from this. Like, this is what it's going to, this is, this is how I feel. Did she feel like she believed that? 
When I told her it was nobody else? Uh -huh. Yeah. She, I mean, I believe her when, you know, like, if I'll, I believe that she would never have, like, an affair on me, and she knows that I wouldn't do that to her. And the coolest thing about this is right now, there's only one person in this room that knows what the truth is. And in about five minutes, there's going to be two of us. So that's the coolest part, okay? And then I'm going to go share that with them out there, okay? Yeah. I wanted Chris to know that the gig is up. If he had something to do with her death, I was about to find out. Did you physically cause Shanann's disappearance? No. Do you know where Shanann is now? No. Are you lying about the last time you saw Shanann? No. Do you know where Shanann is now? No. Chris failed the polygraph test. At that point, I took my computer out of the room to grade the charts. Grading scale for someone who is a truth teller, we would consider them to be a plus two or higher. And we would consider someone to be deceptive if they were a negative four and below. Chris Watts scored a negative 18. He failed every question on the test. That deception on that polygraph causes Watts to become our primary suspect. Confronted with the results, he confessed to killing Shanann, but maintained the false narrative about her killing the girls. Do you know where Shanann is now? No. Were you born in 2018, did you ever say anything out of anger to a loved one? No. Suddenly, the investigators found the missing bed sheet. going to be the worst one, smell-wise. Mm. So that one's the one that needs to go by itself? Yeah. Okay. I think we can just like drape it over this bar. Yeah, let me see. Hopefully we can put the wall. The truth emerged when the bodies were discovered. Shanann's body was found in a shallow grave at the oil site where Chris worked. The bodies of Bella and Celeste were found in oil tanks nearby. Autopsies revealed that Shanann was strangled and Bella and Celeste were smothered. Chris Watts was arrested on August 15th, 2018. He was charged with multiple counts, including first-degree murder, unlawful termination of a pregnancy, and tampering with a deceased human body. Shanann was unaware of the affair and was trying to save their marriage, even planning a romantic getaway for them. But her social media posts also hinted at underlying problems. 
She often expressed frustration about Chris's lack of engagement and emotional distance. Friends and family noticed a change in Chris's behavior. He became more aloof and less communicative. He lied to me because if I'd have known that he had a child on the way, I'd have never wasted my time with him in the first place. I'm still in shock that this whole thing happened. I like I, I, like, that's why I gave him the benefit of the doubt for the first day, because I was just like, no way. Like, I didn't even think about that. I mean, murder was not on the top of my mind when somebody doesn't come home for an evening. On November 6th, 2018, Chris pleaded guilty to all charges as part of a plea deal that spared him from the death penalty. His guilty plea was seen as an attempt to avoid the potential for a lengthy trial and the death penalty and to possibly give some closure to Shanann's family. The cameras do not lie. You carry them out like trash of the house. Yes, I seen the videotape. You buried my, my daughter Shannon and, and Nico in a shallow grave. And then you put Bella and Celeste in huge containers of crude oil. You heartless monster, you have you have to live with this vision every day of your life. And I hope you see that every time you close your eyes at night. Oh, I forgot. You have no heart or feelings or love. Let me tell you something. I will think of them every day of my life. And I love them every day of my life. Prison is too good for you. This, this is hard to say, but may God have mercy on your soul. I hope you enjoy your new life. It's nothing like the one you had out here. May the courts have no mercy on you. This is something we will never get over. We will always mourn the loss of our family. And in that, we are united in our grief. I am still struggling to understand how and why this tragedy occurred. I may never be able to understand and accept it, but I pray for peace and healing for all of us. I hate what has happened. Your father and sister and I are struggling to understand why, but we will remain faithful as your family, just as God remains faithful because of his unconditional love for all, for us all. We love you and we forgive you, son. On November 19th, 2018, Chris was sentenced to five life sentences without the possibility of parole. So the court is going to sentence Mr. Watts as follows. With regard to count number one, murder in the first degree as it relates to Shanann Watts, the court is gonna sentence you, sir, to uh, a life sentence in the Colorado Department of Corrections, followed, um, excuse me, with no possibility of parole. Three of these sentences were to be served consecutively and two concurrently. Additionally, he received 48 years for the unlawful termination of Shanann's pregnancy and 36 years for tampering with the bodies. I feel so stupid. Like we were duped by one of our good friends and we feel so stupid about that now. Like trusting him to stay the night in the same house as our daughter. I mean, I'll never let that go. We, we thought we were doing the right thing by trying to be a good friend to him. Do you feel betrayed? Oh my God, like, yeah, like. During no time in the 48, 72 hours we were with him, did he ever, ever show remorse. Right? Like, he never once cried. Mm -hmm. I guess it's now a red flag. I know. He was worried with how this, how he's being looked at. You know what I mean? Like he was worried with 